Ever get that feeling the bigwigs are keeping secrets? Like they know something about a coming storm while we're left scrambling for umbrellas? Today, we'll dive into their plans and see what lessons we as preppers can take from them to be better prepared. Have you ever wondered why the super rich seem so nonchalant about global threats? Maybe it's because they have a secret weapon, top tier preparedness. We're not just talking about a stocked pantry, these folks are taking it to the next level. Their plans involve elaborate bunkers, years worth of supplies, and here's the kicker, they're not settling for canned beans. They're taking gourmet freeze-dried meals that could satisfy a Michelin-starred chef, even after a nuclear winter. How do they do this? Using the science of sublimation, something we'll discuss in greater detail later on in the video. But this kind of cutting-edge technology isn't just for the elite. The government relies heavily on private suppliers for its own emergency stockpiles. From military rations to FEMA reserves, these companies provide ready-to-eat meals and advanced preservation solutions. It's a strategic alliance. Private companies innovate, and the government ensures a reliable source of critical supplies. We're talking food, medical kits, communication tools, and even portable energy solutions. This shows us that when it comes to getting ready for the worst, having top-notch technology and plenty of money is crucial. Companies that focus on survival gear and emergency prep are always inventing new things. They're finding better ways to store food, make advanced medical supplies, and even create portable energy that can save lives in tough situations. Some companies are developing renewable energy sources like portable solar panels and hand crank generators. These tools are crucial for maintaining communication lines and essential equipment during a prolonged disaster. Meanwhile, Advancements in water purification technology ensure that clean drinking water remains accessible, even if traditional sources become contaminated. Seeing the elite invest in such sophisticated strategies begs the question, what do they know that we don't? Do they know about potential threats that the rest of us don't? It's hard to say for sure, but the actions of the wealthy and powerful hint at an awareness of risks that might not be shared with everyone. This secrecy isn't just about keeping the masses in the dark, it's also a matter of national security. Governments and military organizations need to ensure that their plans remain confidential to prevent adversaries from exploiting any weaknesses. However, the general public can still glean valuable insights from the measures taken by those in power. But what exactly are the preparations? You might picture the military as a self-sufficient juggernaut, ready for anything. But the truth, as they say, is stranger than fiction. Here's the surprising thing. Both the government and the military rely heavily on private companies for a whopping amount of their critical supplies. Everything from the food soldiers eat to the gear they wear comes from private contractors. They're not in the business of building their own MREs, meals ready to eat, or boots anymore. Now, why does this matter? Well, imagine a major crisis like nuclear fallout. If those supply chains get disrupted, the military's operations could be seriously hampered. No food, no fuel, no spare parts, things could get dicey fast. The intricate web of logistics that sustains military operations is vulnerable to disruptions, whether they stem from natural disasters, geopolitical tensions, or economic turmoil. But the military isn't content with just stockpiling. They're pushing the boundaries with portable freeze-drying units. Think about it. Soldiers in the field could potentially harvest local food and freeze-dry it on the spot, creating a constant supply for extended missions. This technology could revolutionize remote operations, eliminating the need for regular resupply missions that are costly and risky. Soldiers could sustain themselves with locally sourced food, which is then preserved using advanced freeze-drying techniques, ensuring they have nutritious, long-lasting meals. However, despite these innovations, there's a growing concern about the government's ability to truly go it alone in a major crisis. Leaning so heavily on private companies for critical resources creates vulnerabilities. What if these suppliers get sidelined by their own issues or supply chain disruptions? This heavy reliance could backfire, leaving essential services and military operations hanging. In a high-stakes scenario, the failure of a single supplier could cascade into widespread shortages and operational failures. Let's not forget strategic stockpiling either. The government isn't just tossing food in a warehouse and calling it a day. They're meticulously planning and managing stockpiles of not just food, but also medical supplies, fuel, and even seeds for post-crisis agriculture. This plan is meant to keep essential services running and help with long-term recovery. For example, they stockpile medical supplies ranging from basic first aid kits to advanced surgical equipment, ready to be sent to areas in need. But the question remains, is it enough? Concerns arise when you think about maintaining these stockpiles. 
Are the supplies rotated regularly to avoid expiration? Are there enough secure locations that can withstand a nuclear attack? It's a massive undertaking that requires constant vigilance and updates to keep pace with the ever-changing global threats. The logistics of stockpile maintenance are complex, involving regular inspections, replenishment of expired items, and secure storage facilities designed to withstand various types of attacks. The bottom line? The U.S. military and government are throwing their tech and resources at preparedness. But relying on external suppliers and maintaining vast stockpiles create challenges that could impact their readiness in unforeseen ways. Innovations like portable freeze-drying units represent a significant leap forward. But they are only part of the solution. Let's now shift gears and talk about how the rich and famous are preparing for the worst in ways others can't even imagine. And of course, why wouldn't they? They have all the money and the resources in the world. We're not talking about a few extra cans of soup here. This is a whole different ball game. Imagine bunkers, not your damp, claustrophobic basement kind, but luxurious fortresses with all the amenities of a five-star hotel. We're talking state-of-the-art air filtration, self-sustaining power systems, and even hydroponic farms to grow fresh food. Talk about apocalypse gardening. The bunkers designed for the elite are architectural marvels. These underground havens are equipped with cutting-edge technology to ensure the highest level of comfort and security. High-efficiency air filtration systems are installed to keep out radioactive particles and biological contaminants, providing a safe breathing environment. Self-sustaining power systems, often relying on renewable energy sources such as solar panels and wind turbines, ensure that these bunkers remain operational for extended periods without external support. One particularly fascinating aspect is the integration of hydroponic farms. These advanced agricultural setups allow for the cultivation of fresh vegetables and fruits without soil, using nutrient-rich water solutions instead. This not only ensures a continuous supply of fresh produce, but also contributes to a balanced diet, crucial for long-term survival. Food is another area where the elite go above and beyond. They're not settling for standard freeze-dried rations. It's all about premium gourmet options that can last for decades, without losing their flavor or nutritional value. Think fancy steaks, gourmet pasta dishes, even vegan options, all carefully preserved with advanced freeze-drying techniques. These meals are designed to meet high culinary standards, offering a taste of normalcy in the midst of chaos. Now you might be wondering how they keep these preparations under wraps. The elite often use third-party companies and complex corporate structures to make their purchases without attracting attention. It's all about operational security, keeping their plans hidden to avoid becoming targets themselves. This secrecy is achieved through various means. For example, they may set up shell companies or trust funds to handle transactions related to their preparedness efforts. This not only shields their identity, but also ensures that their activities do not draw public or media scrutiny. Also, these deals are usually made through secure, private channels to keep things confidential. But why go to such lengths? Beyond just physical safety, it's about a sense of control. In a situation as unpredictable and terrifying as nuclear fallout, Having a plan and the resources to execute it can significantly reduce anxiety. It's a way of saying, even if the world goes crazy, I've got this. There's also a deeper message here. The elite understand that in a crisis, resources and preparedness are king. They know that government assistance might be limited or slow to arrive, and self-sufficiency will be crucial. So, while we might be focusing on the basics – water, food, shelter – the rich are setting themselves up to weather the storm in luxury. It's a stark reminder that wealth can influence not just lifestyle choices, but also survival strategies. Let's take a real-world example. Remember all those headlines about celebrities building bunkers? Mark Zuckerberg, Kim Kardashian, Tom Cruise, the list goes on. These folks aren't just throwing together a dusty fallout shelter in the backyard. We're talking custom-built underground mansions with all the comforts of home, complete with escape hatches and ventilation systems. For those in cramped city apartments, there are creative solutions. High-end construction companies can transform closets or bathrooms into secure havens, complete with food and water storage. It's all about maximizing space while ensuring you have a safe place to ride out the storm. Regardless of your social status, the desire for safety and security is universal. We all want to feel like we have some control in a chaotic world. Whether it's a basic survival kit or a high-tech bunker, preparedness is about taking steps to protect ourselves and our loved ones. Dr. Robin Gershon, an expert on disaster preparedness, says it best. People are trying to control the fear. By doing something, it makes you feel like you have control over it. 
In the face of existential threats, that sense of control, however small, can be incredibly powerful. But there's another facet to the elite's approach, legacy. Let's face it, amassing a fortune often requires a lifetime of hard work and sacrifice. It's understandable that these high net worth individuals would want to protect not just themselves, but also their families and the fruits of their labor. By creating elaborate prepping strategies, they're making an effort to ensure the continuity of their wealth and lineage, even in the most dire circumstances. Of course, these elaborate preparations raise ethical questions. Is it fair that a select few have the resources to ride out a crisis in luxury, while others struggle to put food on the table? It's a complex issue, and there are no easy answers. The disparity in resources and the ability to prepare for disasters highlights the broader issues of inequality in society. However, one thing is clear. The elite's approach to preparedness offers valuable lessons for everyone. Regardless of your budget, there are steps you can take to improve your own readiness. It all starts with a little planning and a proactive mindset. By following the basic principles of preparedness, you can take control of your own destiny and give yourself peace of mind, no matter what the future holds. The preparations of the elite are just a few examples of the importance of being prepared for any eventuality. While their methods and resources may be out of reach for most, the underlying principles of foresight, planning, and self-sufficiency are universal. Let's talk about the cutting-edge tech that's changing the game when it comes to preparedness. And when I say game-changer, I mean it. We're diving into the world of food preservation technology, specifically freeze-drying, and how it's revolutionizing survival strategies, especially for a nuclear fallout scenario. Forget about those sad, dehydrated astronaut meals of the past. Freeze-drying is a space-age technology with down-to-earth benefits. Here's the magic. They take food, zap it to rock-solid frozen, then lower the pressure around it. This makes the ice sublimate, turning straight from ice to vapor, skipping the whole liquidity phase altogether. Sublimation is a fascinating process that lies at the heart of freeze-drying. Normally, when ice melts, it turns into water, a liquid, before evaporating into vapor. However, in sublimation, the ice skips the liquid phase entirely. This is achieved by placing the frozen food in a vacuum. Under these low-pressure conditions, the frozen water in the food converts directly into water vapor. What's the big deal, you ask? Well, this fancy process keeps the food structure, nutrients, and most importantly, flavor intact. The end result? Lightweight, compact, and incredibly tasty meals that can last up to 30 years without needing to be refrigerated. Perfect for those space-restricted bunkers or safe houses, where fresh food isn't exactly an option. Looking ahead, there's a lot of buzz about the government investing in portable freeze-drying units. Imagine this, a military outpost or even a government facility in a remote area could harvest local produce, freeze-dry it on the spot, and voila, they'd have a readily available, nutritious, and long-lasting food source. This kind of self-sufficiency could be a lifesaver in a post-nuclear world, where traditional supply chains are toast. But it's not just about keeping our bellies full, it's about staying healthy, folks. Think about it. After a major crisis, morale can plummet faster than a dropped ice cream cone. Imagine the difference between a freeze-dried meal that tastes pretty darn good and a bland, unappetizing mush. A decent meal can do wonders for keeping spirits high and bodies healthy, which is crucial for long-term survival. The benefits of these technologies extend far beyond just food. Scientists are exploring using the same principles to preserve other necessities like medications and even crucial technological components, ensuring they remain usable over extended periods of isolation or in environments compromised by nuclear fallout is a game-changer. So, as we scan the horizon of preparedness innovations, it's clear that freeze-drying is just the tip of the iceberg. The potential for self-sufficiency in crisis situations is enormous paving the way for more robust and reliable responses to global threats. In a world where the unexpected can happen at any moment, these technologies aren't just cool, they could be life-saving. Speaking of the unexpected, I remember a time when I was on a camping trip with a bunch of friends. We were miles from civilization and wouldn't you know it, a freak snowstorm blew in. Our fresh food supplies dwindled fast, and all we had left were these freeze-dried backpacking meals. Honestly, I wasn't expecting much, but let me tell you, those little packets were a lifesaver. The food was surprisingly tasty and filling, keeping us going strong until the storm passed. The point is, preparedness isn't just for paranoid doomsday preppers. It's about being proactive and taking steps to protect yourself and your loved ones, no matter what the future holds. 
And with innovations like freeze-drying leading the charge, we're better equipped than ever before to face whatever challenges may come our way. We've talked about government stockpiles, luxury bunkers, and the magic of freeze-drying technology. Let's address the elephant in the room. The preparedness market is booming. Companies are jumping on the bandwagon left and right, churning out all sorts of survival gear. From freeze-dried meals promising 30-year shelf life to higher-tech water purifiers that claim to turn thin air into drinking water. The options are endless. But here's the thing. Buyer beware. The quality and effectiveness of these products can vary wildly. Imagine this. A major disaster strikes and you reach for your emergency water filter, only to discover it's a glorified tea strainer. Not exactly confidence-inspiring, right? That's why it's crucial to be an informed consumer in this new preparedness landscape. The more educated we are, the more pressure we put on companies to deliver high-quality goods. We want products that actually work when we need them most, not fancy gadgets that crumble under pressure, literally and figuratively. So how do we become savvy shoppers in this survivalist supermarket? Let me give you some tips I've gathered over the years. First, do your research. Don't just grab the first thing you see on a flashy website. Read reviews, compare features, and check the reputation of the company. Look for independent testing results and certifications to ensure the product performs as advertised. Also, think about your needs. Not every survival kit is created equal. Tailor your purchases to your specific situation and potential threats. Do you live in a flood zone? Invest in sandbags and waterproof containers. Prone to wildfires? Focus on fireproof shelters and respiratory protection. Another important tip is that you shouldn't skimp on quality. Sure, a fancy $500 water purifier might seem excessive, but what if it's the difference between having clean drinking water and getting sick? Remember, preparedness is an investment, an investment in your safety and well-being. And lastly, learn how to use your gear. Don't wait until disaster strikes to figure out how to use your fancy new gadgets. Read the manuals, practice assembling your shelter, and test your water filter. Knowledge is power, especially in a crisis situation. Now, I'm not saying you need to go full-blown survivalist and build a doomsday bunker, but a little planning and preparation can go a long way. I remember there was this one time our area lost power for a whole week during the snowstorm. Though it did make life difficult, we did a basic emergency kit with flashlights, non-perishable food, and a battery-powered radio which helped ease the troubles a bit. It wasn't glamorous, but it kept us safe and comfortable until the electricity came back on. That experience really hammered home the importance of being prepared, even for everyday emergencies. Look, folks, the key takeaway here is this. We've peeled back the curtain on how governments, the military, and even the wealthy prepare for nuclear scenarios. It's not just about having a fancy bunker, although that would be nice. It's about having a sound survival strategy and the resources to back it up. Educate yourself, choose your gear wisely, and put together a plan that works for you and your loved ones. Because let's face it, feeling prepared gives you a sense of control and peace of mind, no matter what the future holds. So take charge, be proactive, and remember, knowledge is the ultimate survival tool. While it's obvious the elites and the higher-ups have their toes deep in preparation, what about the common man, the people of the middle class? Click the video on screen now to learn how America's middle class is in bad shape right now.